Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson on stats and probability. In this lesson, we're going to carry on talking about um, some stats, and then we're going to do a whole bunch of exam paper questions on stats in different sections of it. Um, and then I'm also going to go through how to use a calculator to get your line of least squares and your coefficient R. OK, so let's get going with this, OK? First of all, what is the five number summary? So this is what we use for our box and whisker plot, okay? So first of all, when you draw a box and whisker plot, it looks something like this, but guys, you need to use a ruler when you draw this, okay? So let's pretend that it's evenly distributed. Okay, more or less evenly distributed. And you should have used a ruler for everything that I've drawn here. So this number here is going to be the minimum data value. Okay, so if they ever ask you for the five number summary, this is what it's made up of. This is the minimum data value. The lower quartile, remember, is Q1. Okay, then the median, which is Q2 and then the upper quartile, which is Q3. And remember, this makes the interquartile range. Q3 minus Q1 is the interquartile range. And then you've got the maximum value. So when they ask you to write down the five number summary, that is what they're asking for, okay? And it can be represented by a box and whisker plot, but the most important thing with a box and whisker plot, and we'll talk about this in a second, is, I mean, what, I'll show you some examples of box and whisker plots, is that you need to use a ruler and you need to designate values on this. In other words, you need to draw a line and then draw in all the little points here and show what they are so that you end up with a perfectly drawn to scale box and whisker plot. Because the reason for that is we're going to use that information, uh, the information for this, as well as how it looks to decide if the data is skewed or not. So if the data is, data is determined to be symmetrical or skewed relative to the median or the Q2, okay? So you look at the data. So if you look over here, Okay, that's, I don't know what those little scribbles are there. Okay, right, you've got a minimum Q1, medium is Q2, Q3, and a maximum. Okay, oh, so if you look over here, do you see the difference from here is 2, and the difference over there is 3, okay? So if the data is skewed predominantly to the right of the median, we say that this data is skewed to the right. In other words, if we find more data on the right-hand side of the median, then we say the data is skewed to the right. If, and it's got nothing to do with the box, with the whiskers, okay, it's everything to do with this data, yeah. So if the data in this one, you could see that it's actually, even though this is two and this is three, we would say that it's basically symmetrical because this year is a difference of two and this year is a difference of two. So therefore, we can say that this data is symmetrical about the median. Whereas over here, you can see that most of the data is found on the right of the median, and therefore we say the data is skewed to the right. Similarly, if most of the data is on the left-hand side of the median, then we can say the data is skewed to the left. And again, it's got nothing to do with the whiskers. The whiskers are just giving you the outliers. Okay, so if the largest number of the data set is far removed from the bulk of the data, we call this number an outlier, and the outlier will result in a long whisker. So if we had to look at this box plot here, and this is what I meant by nice equal little points along the line that you have to draw in. Okay, do you see that this value here is a 2? That looks like about almost a 6, so I make it 5.8. This looks like it's six, seven, eight and a half. This is nine, 10, 11. This is 15, 16, 17, 18. Okay, so do you agree the gap over here 
is almost the same as the gap over here. So I would say that's basically symmetrical. I mean, this is about just two point, what's that, 2.7, and this is about 2.5. So yeah, I would say it's almost perfectly symmetrical, but there is a really big outlier up there. Okay, so now it says the following are heights in centimeters of the first 11 people who went to the national stadium to watch the first game of Africa in 2013 South Africa. So it says, yeah, we've got 143, 171, 182, 155, 171, all these numbers. It says draw a box and whisk a diagram. So the first thing we need to do is we need to do a five number summary. So in order to do our box and whisker, we need a five number summary. So we need a minimum number, the maximum number, we need Q1, Q2, and Q3. So in order to get these numbers, we actually need to arrange our numbers from smallest to biggest. And you can see that they definitely aren't because here's 143, fair enough, but here is 150. So the first thing we're gonna do is organize the numbers in from smallest to biggest. So there are 11 numbers, okay? So it's gonna be 143, Tick. The next biggest number is definitely 150. Next up is 155. Then there are no more 15, so it's going to be, oh, there's 100 over here. Whoopsie. 100. Okay. Then we've got 164. We have two 171s, 171, so if we're looking for a mode, that would be it, 171, 171, 180, 182, 188, and then finally 190, and then what we do is we count to make sure we've got enough numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Yay, because they said there were 11 people. We sorted. So our minimum number degree is 100. And our maximum is 190. Now we need to get Q1, Q2, and Q3. So the easiest way to do this is to find the median first, which is the middle root. So we've got 11, which means there has to be five on either side. So... This is going to be easy. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five. That there is Q2. One, two, three, four, five. Now to get Q1, we need halfway through the year. So that's going to be 150. So that's Q1. And then we need halfway through years. So that's 182. So that's Q3. So now what we need to do is we need to first write these numbers down so we know what we're doing. This is 150, this is 171, and this is 182. Okay, so now the rule is this grade, what are you, grade 12s? You need to draw a line and you have to be very neat about it. And you actually need to fill in all the little values between those lines, okay? Now, I know that 100 is a bit of an outlier, so we, but we still have to show it. And you guys are going to use a ruler to do this. Unfortunately, I do not have the facility of a ruler. So I would do 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150. And obviously, you have a ruler that says that these are millimeters and this is each centimeter. So it makes it easier for you guys. This is 160, 170, 180, and 190. So remember, you're supposed to have used a ruler and you're supposed to have. These would each be one centimeter, I would say, and then each of those would be a millimeter. Okay. So the smallest value that we want here is 150. Okay, we've got 100. Okay, there's 100. Okay, now we want 150, which is over here. That's going to be my first Q1. We want 171, which is over here, more or less. We want 182, which is over here. So there we go. 
and we want 190 so that we can join the dots and remember this has to be drawn with the ruler and a pencil please grade 12s okay and then we label it so this would be a hundred this would be 150 this would be 171 this is 182 and this is 190. Now it says draw state whether the distribution of data is symmetrical, skewed to the left or skewed to the right. Okay, well obviously this bit here is much bigger than that, but that's only like what is that? That is nine units. That is way bigger than nine units. So therefore we can say the data is definitely skewed to the left because there's more data on the left hand side of the median. What are the outliers? The outliers are 100 and 190. That's the data that's the form the whiskers is 100 and 190. Right, let's try another one, but this time we're going to look at determining our standard deviation. Okay, so in order to do this, we need to first of all, before we do anything else, it says um, the following data shows the ages of 10 people who donated the blood in December of 2012. And it says determine the mean in terms of X. Okay, so do you agree that the mean, what we do is we add all these numbers and then we divide it by 10 and we would get our uh, mean. So what we're going to do is just use our calculator to add the numbers for the time being. So let's do that. Okay, let me just quickly get rid of her. properties. There we go, now it's out the way. Okay, so let's clear the, let's move this over a little bit. Okay, there we go. So now we're going to just, all we're going to do is add up these numbers. So we're going to go 25 plus 47 plus 40 plus 34 plus 28 plus 37 plus 28 plus 55 plus 30 equals so that's 324 so the mean of this is going to be 324 plus x all divided by 10 because that's how we would find the mean we would add up all these numbers and just divide by 10 but we don't have the number we have x now it says determine the value of x if the mean is 36 well that means that this thing has to equal 36 so therefore we can say 324 plus x over 10 is equal to 360 I mean 36, sorry. Then if we can multiply both sides by 10 and you get 324 plus x is 360. Therefore x is going to be 360 minus 324, which is, what is that? That is 36. So therefore x is 36. Okay. Um, let me just check if I'm right. Um, that is going to be yeah, that is a six, and then that is a five, and five. Yeah, so that happens to be 36, just by luck. Now it says, here's determine the standard deviation. Okay, so now we're going to use our calculator to work out the standard deviation. So the first thing we need to do is get it into um, your mode, okay, into the stat. So we're going to go shift stat, and we are going to choose, no, let's try again. Always get this wrong. Mode. There we go. And we're going to choose stat two. And then we're going to choose one variable. One. Okay. And now we're going to put all the numbers in. So we're going to go 25 equals 47 equals 40 equals 34 equals and then 28 equals 36 equals 37 Ooh, let's try again equals then 37 equals 28 equals 55 equals 
and then the t equals. Now, by the way, I'm using the HP300S um, scientific calculator emulator here, but I found that on the whole, the way you do this, whether you're using a Casio or a Sharp or the HP, they follow the same route, okay? You might have to press a shift button to get to the stat or whatever, but they follow the same route where there's always the options of one variable, an A plus BX, whatever, okay? So you guys just need to work your way around, and the best thing is to go and look at your... Um, user manual and guys it's very easy to find a user manual you can either if they haven't given you one you can either just which they do 90 percent of the time the book that big fat thing that the, the piece of paper that they gave you when you when you bought your calculator that you probably threw away with the box that was a user manual okay if you still have it great if you don't go onto the internet and just type in the make that you have so for example if you've got a i don't know whoopsie whoopsie sorry i'm breaking the place down if you've got a sharp I don't know, EL531VH or a Casio, whatever, whatever, whatever. Just go and type the code in and then go use a manual and press enter into Google and it'll come up with it and then go type in stat into the into the, the, the document. It's probably a PDF document. Um, so then type in statistics or go look through the menu to find statistics and go to it and you'll see it's all there. Okay, so now we press AC. And then we're going to see there's a stat thing there. So we go shift, stat, okay? And it asks you what do you want. And we want the variables, I think, four. There we go. And this little bit here, this delta x, that is the standard deviation. So what we're going to do is press three and then go equals. And they'll tell us that the standard deviation is 8.87. 8.87. So in this case, the standard deviation is 8,87. So that means that they expect it whenever they say to you, you know, if someone says to you, um, I'll be there at 2 o'clock plus or minus 10 minutes. Okay. Generally, when they say that, they mean they might be 10 minutes late. But what they are saying when they say plus or minus 10 is that they're giving themselves a standard deviation. They're giving themselves a deviation of 10 minutes either way. So it means that they could be there at 10 to 2 or at 10 on all the way through to 10 past 2. In other words, they're giving themselves a 20 minute gap to get there on time. Okay. Now, this is what the standard deviation means. It means that the mean, the average is 36. And then the most, most of these things should fall within the standard deviation of 8,87. Now, since how many people of ages which differ from the mean by more than one standard deviation? Okay, so in other words, we can go 36 plus, let's say, 9. We're going to round it up to 9. Now, let's, yeah, let's leave it as 8,87. Okay, 8,87 is going to be what? That's 8, 7, 6 and 8 is 14, 44, okay? And if you subtract it, if you go 36 minus 8, 8, 7, what do we get? So that's 0, 0, so that becomes a 3, 1, 5 minus, 5 minus 8 is, 15 minus 8 is 7, 27. So in, in other words, anybody who is 27 years and younger and anybody who is 45 years and older fall out of your standard deviation. They fall out of the gap. So let's see, there's one, two, 28 doesn't work, 37, three. There are only three people that are outside the standard deviation. Only three people fall outside the standard deviation. Okay, I understand that. So the reason for this is basically what they say is that most data follows a kind of bell curve. And this here would be your mean. Okay, and the standard deviation is a certain distance away and that is acceptable. Those are considered to be acceptable. Um, values on either side of the mean. Okay, right, now we're going to look at a cumulative frequency column. So you can see that we're doing a whole bunch of different types of statistics questions or stat questions on the, day, the work that we've already covered. Okay, so now we're going to do this and then as we go through it, 
Okay. As we go through the different questions, you'll be able to see um, the different types of things that we're going to do. So let's go through it. First of all, we're going to work out the cumulative frequency. They say the following table shows the marks out of 50 of 40 grade learners, 11 learners in life orientation. Okay, so the interval here is from 0 to 10 and the frequency is 2. Okay, um, so therefore we can see that this year is going to be what? Okay, obviously the cumulative frequency is just 2. So two people, two people have actually received a cumulative frequency, I mean a mark of 0 to 10. Seven people received a mark of 10 to 20, but do you agree nine people got less than 20? Okay, nine plus 14 is 23 people got 30, less than 30. 23 plus 12 is going to be 35. 35 people got less than 40, and obviously 40 people got less than 50. Apparently nobody got full marks. Okay, so this shows you, the cumulative frequency here, shows you the total number of marks up to that point. Okay, the total number of people that got this. Now it says complete the cumulative frequency. Okay, so what we need to now do is we need to plot this. Okay, so the first thing is we need to look at, we're going to use these marks points here, okay? So we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, okay? These are the marks and this is the cumulative frequency. So we're going to say that obviously it's only two. So we got two people that got 10, okay? And you know what I'm going to do? I know that normally we do dots, but I'm going to do crosses here just because every time I try and do a dot, my stupid menu comes up. Okay, then we've got at nine people got 20, so it's nine. 23 people at 30, 15, 20, 23. Um, 35 people at 40, so it's 35 people at 40. And 50 is 40 people. Okay, so if I draw this, And yes, you're supposed to do it in one fell soup. I apologize about this. But grade 10s, grade 12s, please, please, please don't do what I'm doing now and try and color it in. Use your pencil, because you've used a pencil, use your eraser, erase, erase the size and join it neatly. Okay, so do you see it forms a vaguely S shape? So that's pretty cool. So now we've completed it. Then we've done this. Okay, now it says learners require 30% to pass the test. Use the OGAV to determine how many learners passed. Okay, so what is 30%? 30% of 50 is what? 30% of 50 is what? So do you agree that 30% is going to be how many marks? It's going to be 15 marks, okay? How do I get this? It's 30 over 100 times by 50 over 1. That cancels with that, that cancels with that, and 3 times 5 is 15. So 15 marks would give me a pass, okay? So if I go and I look at this, I go, well, there is 10, there is 20. If I go up here at about 15, do you see that five people have got less than 15? It looks like five people have got less than 15, which means that the rest of the learners would have passed Okay, so therefore I can say that about 45 learners passed their exams, passed their exams. Okay, and there is some leeway. You don't have to worry too much past their, I've written their games, past their exam. Um, you can see that there is some leeway because if you drew this just a little bit steeper, a little bit shallow, it could have been a four, it could have been a six, okay? So they're kind of nice about that. Okay, let's try this question now. Okay, so it says the ages of 500 people 
attend a concert. Now again, this is not that hard, working out the cumulative frequency bit and drawing it. The bit that I'm interested in are these two questions. We, we cannot do these two questions until we've done this, okay? So, and I apologize for the, um, the skewness and the thing, but it's, this paper is actually an old exam paper from the Gauteng, it's the Gauteng prelim paper for 2002, the official one. Um, I mean, sorry, 2015 Gauteng prelim paper two. And um, unfortunately, when it was scanned in by the department, this is what it came out like, but I really wanted to do this question with you. So this is why we got this Thing. So it says ages of 500 people. So we know that this has to add up to 500. Okay, if it doesn't, then we've done something wrong. So the cumulus frequency here is 20. 20 plus 130 is 150. 150 plus 152 is 200. And let's try again, it's 302. Um, eraser. Uh, black, 302. If I then add 92, I get 394. I add 86 and I get 480. And I add 18, I get 498. And there we go with our 500. So now we've got our numbers. Okay, now we need to plot our cumulative frequency graph. So on 10, we've got 20 people. So this is age in years. Okay, so it's about halfway. Do you agree? And this is the number of the cumulative frequency. So, and this is just me checked. One, two, three, four. So this is 20, 30, 40, 50. I mean, 20, 40, 60, 80. Okay. So, do you agree that this is going to be plotted halfway and halfway with and, and one? That's that there is 10 people have a frequency of 20. Then we've got 20 people have a frequency of 150, so that's 120, 140, 150, right? Then we have got 30 people have a frequency of 302, so that's just about over there. Um, 40, frequency of 394, so that's 40, that's 380, 394 is over here. 60, 480, so that's there, and 80 is 498, so that's over there, and then finally 100 is 500 over there. Okay, so now I need to join the dot. Please, grade 12, note that you always have to start from zero. 0, 0, point when you are joining the cumulative frequency because obviously you've got zero people at zero age, okay? So you always have to start with zero. And I apologize for missing that. Okay, now it says use your cumulative frequency graph to estimate the median age. Now, the thing about this, which is interesting about using the cumulative frequency graph, is you actually do the norm normally, okay? Normally, you've got y is equal to mx plus c, right? And y is dependent on x. So what you normally do is read along the x-axis and then read up and you find what the y value is. In this case, we're actually going to do it the other way around. We know that there are how many people? There are 500 people. I mean, the cumulative frequency is 500. So therefore, halfway between this, the median age has to be in the group that works out to be 250. So in other words, here is 20 of the people, that's 150, there's 302. So therefore, the 250th reading has to be somewhere in this group here, okay? But let me show you how we do this. So we go up to 250, dun, 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 to 20, to 40, to 50, and then we read across. We go across, and then we go down, okay? And it's obviously not at 30, okay, because 30 is over there. So I would say it's approximately 26. But you would probably be accepted if you'd said 25 or 27. The point is that you're saying it's between 20 and 
30 and probably closer to 30. Okay, so that is the median age. Now it says the percentage of people at the concert who is 16 years and older. 16 years and older. Okay, so how do we work this out? Okay, we know that 16 years and older is about, okay, this is the age. So do you agree that that nine over there, oopsie, let me check. This looks like, okay, that's 20, this is 10 and that there is 20. So I would say that 16 is going to be halfway between these. So I would say it's about over here. Okay, so if I read across, I would say that that value there is 20, 40, 60, 20, 40, 60. Um, I would say that that there is about 70%, 70, 70 out of the 500. R equal 70 of the 500 are um, 16 and below. Okay, and it says a percentage of people who are 16 years and older. So I would say about 70. Now, obviously, it depends on how you've drawn this as to whether where your 16 is. Okay, but I would say it's about there. So let's say 70 out of the 500 are 16, are smaller than 16, are less than 16 years old. Do you agree then we've got 430 out of the 500 are 16 years and older okay but what did they ask for they asked for the percentage so we have to go 430 over 500 times by 100 over one we cancel those two four goes in five goes into 43 eight remainder three so it's going to be 86 percent so approximately 86 percent of the people at this concert are 16 years and old and obviously there's going to be a little bit of a leeway as to how you get this right grade 12s please please make sure to understand that the mark allocation for this graph there is a mark for grounding this at zero zero there is a mark for joining the points beautifully and there's a mark for plotting the points beautifully Okay, so there are your marks for your cumulative frequency. Right, now let's talk about spatter plot, spatter, scatter plot and scatter plot examples and correlation. Okay, so if you're plotting some points, okay, random points, okay, 90% of the time, unless you're plotting an exactly right, perfectly correct values from the um, from an equation, you're going to get data values that look like this, okay? And they kind of look like they're making a straight line, right? So what we say is that if it looks like it's making a straight line and it looks like the gradient is positive, then we say it has a positive correlation. If the gradient has a negative gradient, I mean, if the line looks like, if it looks like it's plotting to a line, but it's a negative gradient, we say it's got a negative correlation. And if the plots, dots are everywhere, you can't possibly see where there is any possibility of a straight line, we say there's no correlation. Okay, pretty obvious, right? So, so like I said, we say the scatter, scatter plot has a positive correlation if the line of best fit is a positive straight line. Negative correlation is a line of best fit is a negative straight line and no correlation. So, Scatter plots are used to plot bivariate data. That's, that's a very big word for saying we've got two variables. So, example, y equals mx plus c is an equation that fits data that would have necessarily might have started off as a scatter plot. So, for example, over here they've got I can't actually read this something stage, and yes, observed stage, and then basically they've plotted it, or forecasted, forecast values versus observed values, and then they've plotted them, and they've drawn a best fit line. Now, what might be interesting here is the fact that the best fit line only goes through one, two, three, and four points, but do you see that there's almost equal amounts of data on the top and on the bottom, and the distance between the outer 
parts of the data, the furthest data, are more or less the same. And that's how this best fit line has been drawn. Okay, now, data that lies very far away from the bulk of the data are called outliers. In this case, we would look at that bit there and that bit there, and we'd say that they're outliers. Now, outliers, outliers are generally, 90% of the time, outliers are false readings. There's been something wrong in the incorrect, there's been an incorrect reading taken somewhere that has, or it not, might not be an incorrect reading. This here, for example, is a knee versus ankle diameter. But if you look at the top here, this bit here, I don't know if you can see, this is the knee diameter versus the ankle diameter. And the outliers might be just people that have got much bigger knees than they have ankles, okay? In which case, they will be outliers, okay? So maybe they had a knee operation, or maybe they just do naturally have bigger knees than they have ankles, okay? Right, so now we need to talk about the least squares regression line because the least squares regression line is the way that we determine the line of best fit. So up to now, generally what's happened is that we have kind of done this. We've kind of looked at the data and gone, hmm, kind of looks like it's going up this way. Look, there's equal amount of points. I'm just going to go, woo, but I could have gone, woo, when I could have gone, woo. Okay, maybe not, but the point is that there is a room for area. So there's a mathematical way to work out where the line of best fit is, and it's called the least squares regression line. Okay, so the way it works is that it's an equation of the least squares regression line is this horrible thing. Okay, it, well, no, not this, but this isn't horrible at all. This is a straight line. Y is equal to A plus BX. See that it kind of has the same format. Normally, a straight line is Y is equal to MX plus C. Yeah, Y is equal to A plus BX. But A plus B are special. A is your y-intercept and B is your gradient, but your, first of all, remember, outliers are excluded from the calculation. So what we do is we calculate the average x and the average y using formula. So the average x is given as the sum of x divided by n, and the average y is the sum of y divided by n. Okay, pretty obvious, right? Then you calculate the gradient of the line using this formula. So you go x minus the average x multiplied by y minus the average y, all divided by x. This, so this is the sum of them. So let's say we have four points, okay? We would find the first point minus the average times by the first y value minus the average multiplied together, okay? And then x minus x average all squared and that's the sum of that okay and that there is going to give you that b that we were talking about okay so then you'd work out then calculate the y-intercept by substituting in the average x and average y and b into the equation y is equal to a plus bx okay so this is how you would do it if you would do it manually okay this is how you would do it if you do it manually but <laughs> Okay, luckily for us, our calculators have got this wonderful facility to work this out. Okay, so we are going to show you how to do it on our calculators. If you want to work it out manually, you're welcome to, but seriously, use the mark allocation to this question compared to the amount of time it would take you to do it manually. It's not actually worth it. It's rather better to just learn how to do it on your calculator, okay? So the predictions using the line of best fit. Line of best fit is able to make predictions about the given data. So we can use interpolation. That means that we can use the given X and Y value of the line to best fit to make a prediction, okay? Extrapolation means we can extend the data past it to make a prediction, okay? So it's all very well saying that we've got the best line of best fit, but we actually want to know how closely the data fits the best line, best fit line, okay? So that is called the correlation coefficient. The correlation coefficient gives us an idea of how close our data actually fits the best line that we've chosen. So this is the formula for the correlation 
coefficient as r equals 1 over n minus 1 multiplied by the sum of x minus x average over sx multiplied by y minus y average over s of y where n is the number of data pairs s of x is the standard deviation of the x values s of y is the standard deviation of the y values obviously this is the average x value and average y value Okay, so then again, it's a horrible formula to do manually. This is how we would do it manually. And again, seriously, for the amount of marks available for this type of question in the exams, it's not worth trying to do this horrible sum, especially when 90% of the time the question gives you at least 10 or 12 X values, okay, minimum. So it's, it's not a very nice sum to do. But we can, so we will show you how to do it in the calculator, that's what I'm going to say. But, oh, it's time. But let me just finish this. We can interpret the correlation coefficient as such. The R should be between big one, one and minus one, okay? Minus one indicates a negative and strong correlation. In other words, it looks like a negative straight line, okay, like we said. Positive one indicates a positive strong correlation. In other words, it's got a strong um, correlation to a positive straight line and zero means that it has no correlation and so the closer you are to zero the worse your base fit line is a match to your data okay so we will tomorrow no we won't yes tomorrow we'll start on this question here and i will go through on the calculator, how to calculate the least squares regression line or best fit for the data and how to cal calculate the correlation coefficient of the data. So we will do that tomorrow. Have a wonderful evening. Cheers.